The snug port of Villefranche, in spite of the luxury yachts glistening in its bay, offers travelers an easygoing slice of small-town Mediterranean life just minutes from the bustle of Nice and Jet City Monaco. This town feels Italian, with soft orange buildings, steep narrow streets, and its pastel harbor. When the original ancient port was overtaken by pirates, its villagers fled into the hills. Later, in the 13th century, the king wanted to re-inhabit and therefore strengthen his coastline. To encourage the villagers, he granted the town tax-free status, and this place became Ville, town, France, without taxes. Villefranche. Villefranche was protected by an immense citadel. Today, because most of its 8,000 people call this their primary residence, Villefranche feels more like a real community than neighboring Riviera towns. Only a few families still fish for a living, but huge yachts call this bay home. This stretch of coast is studded with the floating toys of multimillionaires. Locals keep track of the world's biggest yachts and talk about them like they're part of the neighborhood. You never know whose stern line you may be catching. Here's the Lady Mora. Mora is an ex-wife of Saudi Arabia's King Fahd. Some of the Riviera's priciest real estate stretches from Villefranche to Monaco. Cap Ferrat, an extremely exclusive, largely residential community, fills a park-like peninsula. While you'll never get past any of these gates, you can spend a delightful day here just strolling. And this ain't your average jogging trail. Following its well-groomed path, you can stumble upon a hidden little beach, get a glimpse of David Niven's home, wander the ritzy port of Saint-Jean-Cap-Ferrat, and tour the ultimate Riviera mansion and gardens, the Rothschild Efruzzi Villa. The extravagance of Venice, Versailles, and the Côte d'Azur all come together in this villa. Its lavish Belle Epoque interior offers a peek into the life of the rich and eccentric Baroness de Rothschild. Building this palace, the Baroness went through 10 architects. Her furnishings were fit for a queen. Imagine the correspondence composed at her personal letter writing desk. Lady Rothschild's sense of style spilled into her backyard a many-faceted garden. She drew inspiration from her travels abroad, a fragrant English rose garden, an exotic fantasy of cactus, a mysterious Gothic stone garden, and a tranquil Japanese garden, overlooking everything, the temple of love. <laughs> 